Well, hey, welcome back. Uh, I'm still here. <laughs> uh, I've just been pretty busy the last couple weeks, but I wanted to do a video and kind of explain like what's been going on. As I'm waiting for Adobe Media Encoder to create a bunch of proxy files, last weekend, no, two weekends ago, two weeks ago, I was down in Southern Indiana and I was filming for the Owen Putnam State Forest 50 mile, 50K race that's going on down there. And that was a total blast. The race director for the Owen Putnam State Forest 50 mile, 50K, he reached out to me maybe a couple months ago and asked if I could do a film for his race, like for promotion. Uh, and uh, I jumped on it. I uh, heard a lot about this race. It's supposed to be the toughest race in Indiana. So that's kind of how this whole thing kind of set up. And I really saw this video as a really awesome opportunity to do something cool for a race in Indiana, but also, it's just another opportunity for me to get my work out there and really like kind of prove like what I can do. I was able to take a friend to help out film. His name's Tristan Yoder, also a filmmaker. That really helped out a lot having a second person. So he did a lot of the drone shots, B-roll. I had another camera on a glide cam running around. So we kind of split up duties and um, also during all like the interviews, like he was a big help being able to just kind of like spot things that might be going wrong so that I could like really focus on uh, just interviewing the subjects and you know trying to get the best out of them. It was a really really fun weekend and then last weekend we had kind of like a family vacation so like Thursday through Sunday I had no access to pretty much the internet. <laughs> it seems like every Airbnb I've been to they take the router and they like limit it at two megabytes per second. So like we basically had no internet, we got a lot of running in uh, on some new trails. We were, our Airbnb was like right next to a state park. I have a little bit of footage that I'm gonna show you guys here in a second from like right before OPSF. I got a bunch of rental stuff. I have, what I'm filming on right now is a Sony A7 III and I have a Tamron 2875, but I wanted to have backups and like ability to do like two shots, things like that. So I rented another Sony a7 III and I rented some really sweet lenses. And like a couple weeks before I was DMing back and forth with Michael Carson, who you might know from Aero Viper Running, he does a lot of their videos and all that and uh, just a really good filmmaker. He recommended these Sony Zeiss Bodis prime lenses. I got the F2 25 millimeter and I got the F 1.8 85 millimeter. And those lenses are freaking amazing. Just running around with prime lenses on your cameras is just, first of all, the quality can be a lot higher if you get the right lens. And like, I love my Tamron. We used it a lot, but these prime lenses that I got were amazing. So right now I'm gonna go back in time and show you kind of like unboxing these lenses from borrowedlens.com, which I highly recommend. And I'll be back here in just a second. So I rented some gear for this shoot from a place called borrowedlens.com. It's all here on the day it's supposed to be here. Another Sony a7 III in the bag. Here it is. Got the dual memory card slots on the side. Just all around, pretty freaking awesome camera. 25 millimeter, F2. This lens from everything I've read is just an all around beast. Got the 25 and then I also rented the 85. Well, here they are again. Sony bought us 25, 85. Sony A7 III. All this, it was not like super cheap to rent. To buy all of this outright would be maybe like $6,000, but to rent it, it's only a couple hundred. So it's gonna take some time to set this up. I'm gonna go practice with these lenses. One of the coolest things I got though was this Shinobi uh, camera monitor. 
Uh, it's made by Atomos and it's, I think it's like a five inch screen and it's meant to be, it's like super bright so you can take it like outside in daylight. Um, but it's just got a lot of really incredible like settings on here, like being able to check, um, like right now we're checking focus peaking. So, uh, you can like check for overexposure, like false color, like just having that focus peaking, like you can just like quickly dial it in. And the little like one and a half inch screen on the back of a camera just doesn't cut it. Like when you're trying to do like stuff outside, especially. Also with this, I can load in like color profiles so that when I was recording in log footage, I have it running through a color profile on here so I can see what the colors are I'm actually gonna get. You can also do uh, like, I don't know if you can see here, it's got these lines on here now. Cause when I finally put this film out, it'll probably be in 2.35 to one ratio. It's very obvious when people film in 16 by nine and then try to crop it down. It's just like obvious that it's not framed up like that. Having those lines on there to show you where your crop is, is like super important. I also had this variable ND filter from Go. Oh, so you can see it. Yeah, look, so there. See, that's what, that's what it's doing. Look, like you can see it. The light is coming through and now it's not and now it's coming through and now it's not. So when you're outside and you're like shooting a shot that's like more into the sun, you'll do something more like this. And then when you spin around and it's a 180 and you're shooting like back away from the sun, maybe you open it up a little bit more. Uh, there was a lot of shots where I was following somebody into a tent or like through trees. Um, this is a glide cam. Uh, it's got basically a weight and balance system down here. Uh, it's got a handle for you to hold on to. Up here is where you'll like put your camera uh, and you're able to turn it, you're able to like go up, down, sideways, like all different directions. If you do it right and you are good at it, you can get really amazing shots that are just like incredibly controlled, but you have to practice a ton before you can like actually put out a good video with a glide cam. We interviewed like eight people two cameras rolling the whole time, all day during race day. I'm making proxies for 500 gigs, 522 gigs of footage. So you go into it hoping that there's gonna be a good story, hoping that you can um, put together something like a really dramatic film. The weather was like the best weather they've had in years. No one got lost, no like injuries. There weren't that many DNFs. Basically there was like no drama. From a race director's perspective, that's exactly what you want. <laughs> you want no drama. So for Jonathan, like it was a great race. But for me trying to make a film about it, uh, it's gonna be challenging because like I can't like just quickly go to whatever the drama was that happened and like kind of center the story around that. I have to like basically dig really deep into these interviews and like try to piece together stuff and put together a narrative. Uh, so it's gonna be challenging. These were all the memory cards we used. Each of these memory cards are 128 gigs. Uh, they're all full. <laughs> Two memory cards in this camera right now that's almost full. On these Sony a7 you can use dual SD cards. So it's recording to both cards at the same time. The other thing I did, and now you're gonna, you're gonna start to think I'm crazy here if you, already, if you don't already. Two of these hard drives out in the field. And each of these are four terabytes. After the first day, I used a program called Hedge and copied everything from every single SD card to both of these hard drives. Cleared all the SD cards so that we had everything available for day two, which was race day, which we ended up using it all. So now all the footage is on two hard drives and then put it into my Mac Pro. It's backed up on two hard drives in there. It's also currently backing up to my Google account. <laughs> so at the end of the day, a lot of the footage is gonna be in seven different places. That's kind of insane, uh, but I will never lose footage. <laughs> All right, and if any of you are still around at this point, I'm gonna show some kind of like behind the scenes stuff. But yeah, this is basically just gonna be like footage that my friend Tristan filmed with camera C, <laughs> the third camera that we had there. So I'm gonna roll that now. Let me unplug that fridge. Say uh, that 
those who do ultras are crazy. You don't want to see a man, okay? After you've dealt with them in the race, but You just make sure the audio is kind of on there. Yep. Also ignore me, Ryan's the person you're talking to. I'm not here. of the year injured, um, actually all of the year injured. I tore my calf muscle. Okay, well that's it. Thank you so much for sticking around and hanging with me on this video um, where I kind of explained just the whole weekend filming at this race. It was so much fun. I had a blast. I'm really excited for this film to come out. It's gonna take a long time. I'm really excited for everyone to see it because it is a really great race. So the year before this race, it was like a monsoon like in the morning and then it turned to snow in the afternoon and it was just like horrible conditions. Um, Probably would have been a more interesting film. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.